Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. We'll be learning about the anti-lock braking system today. Imagine a situation where you're driving a car at a speed of 80 or 90 km per hour on a highway. A dog tries to cross the road all of a sudden. You apply the brake suddenly. Can you guess what happens after that? As soon as you apply the brake in such a panic situation, the wheels tend to lock and lose traction with the road. This will make your car harder to control and it will start skidding. This may even result in a fatal accident. So in order to prevent this, ABS was introduced. In this video, we'll be talking about the working of an ABS system, the components involved and also the types of ABS. For a better understanding of the problem, it is vital that you have a clear understanding on how a normal brake works and also the steering situations involved during braking. When the driver applies the brakes, the brake pads are pressed against the wheel discs which in turn stops the rotation. As the wheels stop rotating, the vehicle stops. This is how normal braking happens. Now, when it comes to steering, it works on a simple rolling principle. A rolling wheel usually has two kinds of motion. It translates in the direction of vehicle movement and it rotates on its own axis as well. Therefore, it has both translational and rotational velocities. When the wheel rolls, at the point of contact between the wheel and the road, the translational velocity acts in the direction of the vehicle motion, whereas the rotational velocity acts in the opposite direction. When there is no slip, the magnitude of these velocities will be the same making the resultant of these velocities zero at the contact point. This makes it easier for the wheel to turn when the vehicle is steered at normal driving conditions. But when the brake is applied to a high speed vehicle, the wheels stop rotating and get locked, but they continue skidding because of the high speed. In this case, the rotational velocity of the wheels will be zero, but there will be a considerable amount of translational velocity due to skidding of the vehicle. Presence of this velocity makes steering difficult and this may result in accidents. In order to overcome this problem, an anti-lock braking system or ABS was introduced. The anti-lock braking system is a safety system that prevents the wheels from locking for avoiding uncontrolled skidding of the vehicle. ABS ensures better steering control and also reduces the braking distance. ABS was first introduced as an anti-skid mechanism for aircrafts during the 1950s. In cars, ABS was introduced in Mercedes-Benz S-Class and now almost all modern vehicles use an anti-lock braking system. The ABS is also mandatory in many countries. The anti-lock braking system consists of four main components, speed sensors, electronic control unit, hydraulic control unit, and valves. Speed sensors are attached to the wheels for monitoring the speed. It helps in finding the acceleration and deceleration weight of the wheels. The electronic control unit receives signals from the sensors and calculates the required pressure to be applied and sends it to the hydraulic control unit. The hydraulic control unit then applies or releases the brake pressure based on the signal received from the ECU. The control valves are located on the brake lines and are used to regulate the pressure on the brakes. A typical braking circuit consists of a valve connected to the master cylinder, reservoir and the wheel. When the brake is applied, the fluid from the master cylinder enters the brake line. On receiving the signal from the ECU, the valve may either allow the fluid for applying pressure, block the line for maintaining the pressure, or return the fluid for releasing the pressure. So how does this ABS solve the aforementioned problem? When the brake is applied, the wheel sensors sense the speed of the individual wheels and sends it to the ECU. This ECU controls the valves and the HCU for applying and releasing the brake pressure. When you hit the brake hard, the speed of rotation of the wheels reduces and the ABS detects the speed reduction rate of the wheels. When any wheel has a higher speed reduction rate than the others, it shows that the wheel is going to get locked. At this time, the ABS releases and applies the brake momentarily to that particular wheel. The ABS system can apply or release the brake pressure 15 times per second. This pulsating brake applied makes the wheel spin intermittently without getting locked rather than sliding continuously. As the wheels are not skidding, you won't lose control of the vehicle and you can stop it safely within a short distance. This intermittent spinning of the wheels also ensures the rolling action of the wheels and thus makes the wheel respond to steering while under braking conditions. So this is how ABS prevents accidents. Now, let us take another situation where ABS plays a major role. You are driving a car now and it's a rainy day. While driving, one wheel of your car can have good traction and the other wheel can have less traction because of the slippery road conditions. 
Do you know what happens when you apply the brake here? When you apply the brake, a higher frictional force will be developed at the wheel which has traction, whereas a lesser frictional force gets developed in the wheel that slips. The difference in these forces will tend to create a torque. This makes the car spin uncontrollably, which may result in an accident. For this case, ABS has a subsystem called the electronic brake force distribution system. This system measures the slip of each wheel and the yaw rate, that is the rotation of the car from its vertical axis. Whenever there is a difference in the amount of traction experienced by the wheels, it applies lesser brake pressure to the wheels with good traction. This in turn eliminates the formation of torque and the car will be under control. Thus, the ABS ensures the stability of the vehicle. Based on the number of speed sensors used and the number of valves that can be individually controlled, ABS are of different types. One channel, one sensor ABS, two channel, four sensor ABS, three channel, three sensor ABS, three channel, four sensor ABS, and four channel, four sensor ABS. Let's start with one channel, one sensor ABS. In this type of ABS, there is a sensor located on the rear axle and a valve for controlling the braking on the rear wheels. If any of the rear wheels lock, the brake pressure gets released for both the rear wheels. This in turn reduces the effectiveness of braking. This type of ABS usually used in pickup trucks and SUVs equipped with only rear wheel ABS. In the two channel four sensor ABS, a sensor will be located on each wheel and a valve is used to control each axle. Though all the wheels are equipped with a sensor, the individual braking of wheels is not possible here. This ABS is usually found in passenger cars of the mid 1980s. In the three channel three sensor ABS, each front wheel has a sensor on it and a valve to control them. Meanwhile, another sensor and valve are used for controlling the rear axle. Since the front wheels can be controlled individually, maximum brake force can be achieved. However, a single channel for controlling the rear wheels reduces the braking effectiveness. It can be found in pickup trucks equipped with four wheel ABS. Now let's get into three channel four sensor ABS. Here each wheel has a sensor and a separate valve is used for controlling each front wheel. Another valve is used to control both the rear wheels. Although the wheels have individual sensors, the rear wheels are controlled together, which reduces the effectiveness. It can be found in older vehicles with four wheel ABS. Now the last one is four channel, four sensor ABS. Here, every wheel will have a sensor and a valve to control them. Since the valves are individually controlled, maximum braking force can be applied here. Modern cars use this type of ABS for greater safety. Now that's all about the types of ABS. Based on the report of Monash University Accident Research Center, in 2015, ABS equipped in motorcycles has significantly reduced severe injuries caused in crashes up to about 39%. Now that's great, right? So guys, I think you're clear about the need for ABS and it's working now. Wait for more interesting videos like this in the upcoming days. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye.